I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are standing on three four lands, the lands of the Cree, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the traditional homelands of the Métis. The past is what allows us to be here today, so that we can take time to acknowledge and honor those that stood before us by working together towards reconciliation through education and action. I'm going to have a little bit of hype here over the next hour, and I will introduce the drummers in a moment. Um, so feel free to cheer, and they will drum us on as well. It's amazing to see such a large crowd, thousands. We're estimating around 3,000 people here. from Creighton, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Lord Battleford, Lee's Skull Lake, Newsman, Esteban, Rural, Urban, Northern, you are all here making noise for public <laughs> We are here today, teachers, EAs, bus drivers, parents, students, board trustees, and educational partners partners for one reason, to tell the government it is time to invest in public education. It is time, to, it is time for the government to stop playing semantical games in the media talking about record budgets. It is time to acknowledge that decades of cuts and underfunding is significantly impacting our ability to fund our schools and to meet the needs of our students. Teachers, EAs, and other professionals work hard every day to meet the needs of their students, but we are falling short. Too many students, too many needs, and too few resources to go around. In addition to serving in this field objective, I'm a parent, a teacher principal in the community of Rotenville. I see and hear the challenges facing teachers and students each day. I hear classrooms are larger, while teachers and support, supports are less. Less EAs, less counselors, less psychologists, less speech paths, less occupational therapists. Double grades, triple grades, and quads. Multiple curricula, multiple learning needs, EAL, mental health concerns, addictions, poverty, and the list goes on. the Saskatchewan government to invest in the future of our province. So let's make some noise for public education. Uh, my name is Jeff Sweet and I'm the business manager of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 2038 and I'm here in support of the teachers uh, for a lot of reasons. I have children who are in the, the, the system um, but also I think that for a long time labor has siloed itself in that I'm a construction worker and the teachers problems aren't mine or I am in the public service and the construction workers problems aren't mine and we need to strip that away and we're all workers and when uh, when someone is having trouble with their employer, all workers need to band together because that's the only time we have real power is when we have solidarity with, with each other. So we're here giving out uh, coffee and, uh, and chips uh, for free to anyone who is here, whether you're a teacher or just here to support the teachers, uh, in hopes that we can, going forward, think as a whole as labor and not within our own silos. Yeah, I'm just really passionate about public education and I think it's so important that everybody gets together and behind this cause uh, collectively and works together to make sure that the government starts funding it properly. Uh, sure, I'm an educator, so of course I'm concerned about the cuts to public education and uh, the supports for students. So of course I'm going to be here supporting um, teachers, um, EAs, and all of the people who support our education system. It's a travesty, truly, what's happening to our system. Thank you. Thank you. A short statement on the topic. Working conditions suck. And our students deserve so much better than the, what they currently have in the classroom. Yeah, I'm a psychologist who works in education and really 
sick of the cuts. I've been working in public education for five years and I've seen even in my short career how impactful the education budget has been on the most the students who need funding the most. And I really believe that education is the biggest opportunity we have to equalize and provide opportunities for all students. And with the continued cuts, we're just not able to provide what we need. And everyone's trying their best and working really hard. And eventually, we just, enough has been enough. And we're at that point. And we really, it's time. We need we need more support from this government. So, uh, so what brought you out today, sir? Do you have anything to say? Well, my name is Blair Gillies, and I'm a grade three teacher in Saskatoon. And I'm here because um, I, uh, I have a, a packed classroom. Um, my students' needs are not being met, so I'm here today for the kids. Uh, I don't feel like our government uh, values education. I don't feel valued as an educator, and things need to change. That's the bottom line. We need to invest in our future. Kids are our future. I'm Maria Montero. I'm the principal at the school in Saskatoon, and I came out today to support my staff, my students, because the cuts have been just terrible and our teachers are doing more with less. So I'm here to support our teachers and our students so that we can get a quality education. For them to perform the honor song and one additional number. and I came out to show my support for my teachers and to show the SAS government, SAS party government that um, we're aware of their cuts and we're aware of how little they care about us and um, we just wanted to make our voices heard. Uh, yes, my mom is a teacher, lots of teacher friends, uh, just supporting all of them and everything that I've seen in my schools and supporting, yeah, just Scott Moe's got to go. <laughs> And, uh, my father and my stepmom are both educators and I'm actually a future teacher. I'm currently at the University of Saskatchewan for secondary education and it's really nice to see all the teachers here being able to voice their, uh, I guess, support for change. It's really good and I know it's a bad thing to be out here having to try and force the government to change but it's really nice to see that the community of teachers are willing to gather. So I'm a new teacher. Teachers yeah. deserve better. Hi, uh, I'm a student in arts education in the university and it is important that we keep funding education so then it is actually profitable for us to not, you know, have to work three other jobs on top of working overtime on an already salaried position. Awesome. Just, just here to support uh, all the teachers across the province. We've got three kids in the school system, so uh, both being teachers, uh, we feel the cuts, that's for sure. I just want to support education. I think we've been under cut, um, under budgeted for a long time, and we have to save our future. Absolutely. Yeah. You're a teacher? I am not a teacher, but I'm a supporter of teachers. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Just a couple words about why you came out today, if you're a teacher, you know. For sure, yeah. So I teach at, uh, in the Regina Public System, and uh, for seven years now, um, we've, we've been seeing lots of cuts around, like intensive supports, lots of students with autism, students with special needs kind of thing. So this is very important to us and that we get the proper money to fund those students and uh, support them in their journey. I'm a retired school teacher. Yep. I've been retired for 12 years and I'm here in support of all teachers. Uh, my daughter is a high school teacher in Regina so 
we were invited by her and so that's why we're here and uh, things need to change they've they, there's a long way to go and I said when I was teaching 12 years ago it was bad enough I said I would not want to be in the education system right now so what, what brings you out today sir uh, I am a teacher in uh, the province here yeah yes so got to take a stand because this is uh, unacceptable and we gotta we've got to be heard and the government's got to realize what they're doing and they got to take a uh, take responsibility and start funding uh, education properly so what so what brings you out here today man uh, I am a teacher and have been for about 20 years and the things that I've seen happening in classrooms are it's disturbing it's really outrageous and I'm happy to support this movement and, and what's going on in Saskatchewan right now with these people Perfect. well thanks for coming out and you have a great day thanks. Thank you, Yukon Thunderbird. I love public education! Woo! I'm Cameron Moen. I'm a teacher at Momart School. I teach high school. And I'm out here to support um, teacher salary, class size composition, um, and also to just reaffirm and like support all our fellow teachers out here who like have a lot of really big class sizes and um, teacher working conditions are student learning conditions so uh, we're all in this together. I'm a teacher and a mother and education needs to be funded properly in a sustainable way. We don't need more growth, we need sustainable funding that helps our children in the future. The funding model needs to change because not every division's need is the same. So just a couple words about why you came out today and on the sure. topic of the day. Just to came out to support public education. Uh, I'm not a teacher. I'm a mother of six kids that, uh, you know, I've got six kids in the public system right now. So this is really unacceptable to not be funding public education properly, especially when we have a lot of other issues going on with schools, like QIS schools running a surplus in our province. So something's got to change really quick. I came out to support uh, teachers in general and public service in particular. Um, Are you a teacher yourself, sir? No, I'm not. My daughter is. And yeah, it just feels really good to be able to express in some tangible way the degrading of the public sector and services. And it just feels good to be out and be able to do something. I've got a big old medicine wheel on here. It represents balance in our lives, and without funding, our kids can't have that balance. They lose their emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual capabilities. They feel more confident when our teachers are there to teach them. No more cuts. No more cuts. I think public education is very important to all of us, and that uh, they're, they're, this government's just screwing it all up. What today? To support our students. Awesome. You're a teacher? I am, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's been getting harder in the classrooms these last few years, I hear. Hey, yes, it definitely has. Yeah. yeah we're dealing awesome. with a lot more with a lot less. Yeah. Uh, I came out because there needs to be a systematic change in our province. Um, the current government only thinks about what's currently happening and trying to get reelected when they should be thinking about uh, what they can be doing for the students who are going to be in the workforce 20 years from now and beyond. It's very short-term thinking and they just need to think longer. Yeah. My, do my daughter's a teacher okay. and we're here to support her and all they're doing. I'm here because education is so important. I've been a teacher for 16 years and I've just watched the funding go down and down and the needs in a classroom come up more and more. Um, I absolutely am passionate about being a teacher and I love it and my hands are just sometimes tied because I have so many students. So, support education, let's get some more funds. So, as I said, I love public education and public education is a priority for me as a teacher, it is a priority for me as a parent, but it is a priority for everyone across this province because a well-funded public education system is a benefit to everyone. <laughs> Teachers do incredible things. 
things in their classroom despite the challenges that they're facing, but they shouldn't have to face those challenges. And students deserve the best quality education that we can provide them. There is no better investment than investing in kids. <laughs> on public education than we ever had in history. Well, guess what? Everything costs more, and to expect to spend less on education or to not see an increase is illogical. We need to ensure that we are investing in education above the rate of inflation, above our their enrollment group, so that we can support everyone who is in this province and coming to this province so they want to stay here and support a strong teacher. I tell them this. I tell the minister stories that I hear from the classroom about violence, about the disparity that they're seeing in their students. They say they're listening, but where is the action? We need action and not words. We need to see an investment in our students. And what happens when we don't see that investment? We're gonna get loud. This is what happens. This is just the beginning of the fight that we will have if we do not start seeing this government put a real investment into public education. Um, my sister is a teacher and we were just hoping that she doesn't have to pay a lot of money for her students in the future. Yeah. Uh, you're in school, obviously? I'm yeah, assuming. grade yeah. six. Yeah. Are your classrooms pretty pretty crowded these days? Uh, yeah. Yeah. My teacher has to pay for a lot of the things that we do, or like our parents have to pay for a lot of the things we do. Yeah. And it kind of sucks. Over here, we need to support uh, education funding in this province for the future of our province, and I felt it was important to be here today because of that. Uh, I came out here just supporting teachers and with all the teachers. Um, we're talking about class sizes primarily, and I am interested in that. Um, we see class sizes over 30 quite frequently, and uh, especially in places like kindergarten or younger grades, even older grades too, it's just, it's not appropriate, it's not okay, and it's not manageable either. Uh, beyond that too, we could talk about uh, our funding, the amount of money that we spend outside of our own pockets, the amount of hours that we spend outside of classrooms as well. Um, it is ridiculous to be here uh, to advocate for uh, teacher rights and primarily children's rights within that because we shouldn't have to do this. Um, but yeah, that's my take. Absolutely. Well, I'm a vice principal and I'm a French immersion teacher, really passionate about education broadly. Um, in my short 14 year career, I have seen nothing but a complete decline in funding ever since the beginning. Um, and of course, as we've heard today, it's only gotten worse and it's, it's really just a matter of things getting or things catching up to us. Uh, so I think school divisions have done what they can to use their reserves and make it work. Professionals have always just made it work. But we're at a point where we can't make it work anymore, and so I'm here to uh, ask the government to step up and do something about it. Thank you so much. I think it's really important that we have to uh, fund education and support teachers because we are at the grassroots, and uh, every student matters, and we are we are the we are we are educating the future. Yeah, we are. are, you, are you right? We just need to put more money back into education because every single child in our classrooms matter. We are both teachers and without, not even teachers, support staff, SLPs, or occupational therapists, we need everybody. Just in your own words, what brought you guys out here? Well, uh, well I, we're students, right? So we just like, education's obviously pretty important to us, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like we have classes, like what's our, my base class is like 29, I think. Like that's a lot of kids. Yeah. We need more funding. Perfect. Yeah, that's... Same thing as him. I think Presley has something to say about big classroom sizes. Okay. I went to Harbor Landing School. That school was over capacity from day one. I was in a class with 50 kids and two teachers. There are way too many kids there. There needs to be something done about this. 
Yeah, I mean, this is our future, so it's pretty important that we fight for better education funding. Perfect. Yeah. Gotta support the education. 100%. Got two little kids? Well, Gotta make to sure go that they actually sure can have the their kids. school paid for properly. I think you fell from the bubble. Yeah. Mr. Steve Boots. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Good. I like, I love your TikTok. I love your YouTube. Thanks, bud. And I figured I'd come out and, uh, you know, give you an opportunity to talk in the open with a great microphone and a camera here. I mean, I don't usually get that send, opportunity. Exactly. Let's maybe send you some footage of everything I've got here today. Always so nice. You can help out. And, Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, what brought you out here today, Steve, besides the obvious, you know? Just had enough of cuts to public education. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, uh, when I started 15 years ago, uh, the per student funding was just under $14,000 adjusted for inflation. Today it's just under 10. And the national average is 14. We have some of the poorest per capita, or per student funding in the country. We went from first when I started to eight. And it's just enough cuts. Enough is enough. Well, thank you so much for coming out, Steve. Thank being you for a leader coming. in our community and solidarity. Solidarity, man. So hey. it's, just, it's great to see you, Carla. And we're just asking people what brought them out. I mean, it's obvious, but if you got a, a quick word, <laughs> to walk out of that legislature today, where just a few days ago the SAS party told us that no one cares about class sizes and no one cares about cuts for education, to walk out here and say. 3,000 people willing to come out on a Saturday and get loud for public education. It was so important. It was so invigorating and so invigorating. And, um, you know, people have been woken up. They're getting loud. And I am so glad to see it. After a decade of underfunding and cuts by the SAS party government, they're not going to get away with it anymore.